I was born in Talbert County, Maryland, in February of 1818. I never knew my mother, seeing her only four or five times, and only at night. They told me that, when she came to see me, it was always during the night after a hard day's work, and she would walk the whole way. My mother would lie down with me and get me to sleep, but she was always gone before I woke up. She died when I was seven. I never knew my father, although there were rumors that he was my master. Even though my master punished people frequently and harshly, I was not often whipped by him. Something that caused me more suffering than the whippings was hunger. I had very little food, and it was boiled, coarse cornmeal called mush. They would put the mush into a big trough and put it on the ground just like they were feeding pigs. We had to eat the mush with our hands. Even worse than the hunger, though, was the bitter cold. I had no shoes, no socks, no coat, and no pants. The only thing I wore was a coarse linen shirt that hung down to my knees. I didn't have a bed, and so on the coldest nights, I would take a corn sack and crawl in. I had to look outside of the home for help with learning to read. The plan I developed that finally worked was to make friends with the little white boys I met in the streets and have them teach me bits and pieces of what I needed to know to learn to read. Whenever I was sent on errands, I always brought my book with me. I would complete my errand quickly so I could have time for a quick lesson before returning home. By the time I was 12 years old, the thought of being a slave for life began to make me very sad. Some of the boys sympathized with me and wished that one day I could be free like they were. I knew that at that time I was just too young to even think of running away. In the meantime, I decided I would learn to write. I didn't have paper and pencils, so I had to be creative in finding By 1834, I was working for William Freeland. Mr. Freeland, my master, only owned two slaves besides me. Their names were Henry and John. They were very smart, and while I was there, I encouraged them to learn to read. They were eager to learn, so I agreed to teach them. On Sunday afternoons, I would give them reading lessons at the home of a free colored man, and slaves from neighboring farms would often come and learn too. Everyone knew, though, that they had to keep these lessons a secret.